no reach an agreement. Joining me by the phone, uh, joining me uh, via phone here from Boulder, Colorado, Congressman Jared Polis. Congressman, good Sunday afternoon to you, first of all. Likewise, it's great to be on the show. Uh, tax rates and where they stand are at the center of this debate. That continues to be the, 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 the discussion. I want to throw up something from the New York Times here. This is, uh, this is, a, this is a headline from, from the New York Times. Even if Republicans were to agree to Mr. Obama's core demand that the top marginal income rates return to the Clinton era levels of 36%, 39.6% after December 21st, the article goes on to say the additional revenue would be only about a quarter of the $1.6 trillion that Mr. Obama wants to collect over 10 years. Why should Republicans agree to that if it's not going to generate enough revenue, Congressman? Well, it's, it's a down payment on the deal. Uh, we want to make sure that middle class taxes don't go up by $2,000 January 1st. That's something that I feel the president feels Republicans and Democrats should agree on. Uh, that's what we can realistically get done in the next few weeks, have a straight up or down vote on the Senate bill. We have what's called a discharge petition uh, to bring it to the floor of the House uh, to renew the middle class tax cuts. This will continue in terms of figuring out how to actually balance the budget well into next year, but in the meantime, let's not take $2,000 away from every uh, middle class family. So let's assume for a second you guys get the rate that you're looking for. Let's assume that does happen. How are we going to make up for the rest of the revenue? Are we talking about estate taxes? Are we talking about uh, capital gains? Are we talking about dividends? What are we talking about in terms of part additional of, part revenue? Part of the deal, uh, if there's a short-term deal that allows the middle class tax cuts to continue, will likely be a framework that uh, for, for the discussion of these issues next year, the discussion of what we're going to cut. Are we going to tackle entitlement reform? in any way, shape, or form, and what other revenue sources are we going to look at? So, again, the clock is ticking for January 1st to avert a middle-class tax increase, but that's not the, the whole ball of wax right there. The middle, as you said, the, the tax rate going up to 39.6 on income over $250,000, that's a, a part of, of what we need to do to close the budget deficit, but we also need a framework in place to, to get the full uh, full left down the field. In the simplest of terms, for folks who are not familiar with the language of, the, of, of Congress, this discharge petition that was presented last week. Walk us through the next step with regards to that. Well, I mean, again, the next step is the Senate has actually passed the bill to continue middle class tax cuts. If Congress fails to act, the House doesn't act, a number of things happen automatically January 1st. There's cuts to Medicare reimbursement rates, uh, taxes go up for everybody, there's automatic spending cuts across every sector of, of government spending, even ones that are critical for uh, infrastructure in our economy. So that's why there's such interest in averting uh, this fiscal cliff. And I think that we can do that by simply taking up the Senate bill to continue the middle class tax cuts. Before I let you go, uh, starting today, of course, same-sex couples in Washington were able to marry for the first time because the state same-sex marriage law took effect uh, on, on Friday. The Supreme Court announcing on Friday the same-sex law took, took effect at midnight. Supreme Court announcing Friday it's going to wade into the same-sex marriage debate now. As a politician who's openly gay, are we on the cusp of a, of a tectonic shift of sorts with regards to marriage equality in this country? Well, I sure hope so. Those of us who strongly support equality are really looking to the court to do something, uh, you know, like the Loving case that allowed for interracial marriage, like Brown versus Board of Education. It's time to say uh, that you have the right to be in a committed relationship with the person you love, and the government shouldn't tell you who that is. It's a simple, clear-cut case, and I certainly hope the Supreme Court agrees. Democratic Congressman Jared Polis of Colorado, thank you, sir. I do appreciate your time.